Hey. Or Susan, sorry. Good to have you, Susan. Beth Phillips. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Leland Crazy Jones. Hey. <laughs> and thanks for joining us, Deanna. Deanna is our special guest this morning. We've got good stuff we've figured out in Power Mentoring and we're bringing it to this call. Um, Al, welcome. So good to see you, Emily, Katie, Janice, Melissa, John, Rosie, Susan. Good stuff. And those of you that are joining us via phone. Um, we are exploring a topic that I love of this, you know, do I give up my builders from before and just move forward? Or what do I do with them, right? So often <laughs> there's just this dichotomy. There's this crazy dynamic of I love you and you make me crazy, right? How many of you know that? I love you and you make me crazy. So the first thing I want to talk about is how, um, how these people are the perfect people for our growth. I remember um, talking with this uh, family specialist, right? And he was like, you know, you know your family is the best, how is that other view? Um, you know your family is the best place to either drive you crazy or drive you to heaven, right? And I thought, oh my gosh, doTERRA is so much like that, right? These builders are the perfect builders for us to help us become what we were meant to be or drive us crazy. So what's the difference, right? Um, the only difference is you decide, right? Do they drive you crazy? Do they make you crazy? Or do they take you to higher heights because of what you're becoming in the process? So Deanna and I had a conversation about some of these relationships with these builders. Hey, Rox. Welcome, Rachel, Wendy. Um, so Deanna, maybe we could just reenact a little bit of what that conversation was like. So um, unmute and help take us back there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> I was, I was absolutely like almost in a ball crying. I mean, I, I was really hurting over um, what I thought was a really close relationship with one of my team leaders. And um, I guess they just, they got, angry with me for something or uh, upset with me for some reason, didn't really communicate anything. And then they were supposed to lead a call and they just didn't show up and they wouldn't return any of my calls, wouldn't return any of my texts. And then when I finally got a message from them, it was pretty hateful. And um, I thought like I had had something similar happen with several of my leaders about a year before. And I, I thought I'd grown through it and like gone past it. And that this was my new leader, like for my, my um, blue diamond leg. And I thought I had done things different with them. And so then I just, like, I had this horrible stomach ache. I was in a ball practically crying. And I, I texted Natalie and Andy and said, help me because I feel like this is a pattern that I keep seeing. And I just want to, I feel like I'm a terrible leader. This shouldn't be happening to me at this level anymore. I should be past this. <laughs> Any of you ever felt like that? That this shouldn't be happening to you anymore? That you should be beyond this and it's still happening? And I think what you were feeling anyway, so it was crazy because right at that time we had a cancellation and I just picked up the phone and Deanna and I started exploring. And some of the things that we uncovered were amazing. And I think they're common themes. Um, see, if, see if you recognize some of the themes. So one of the things we uncovered was Deanna that you had kind of judged yourself because of these builders and the way they were showing up. Right. So how had you done that? Um, I felt, I mean, I feel like I hear these messages a lot from other leaders that, you know, if you are a certain type of person, then you attract a certain type of person. And so with that belief, I just felt like my, um, my, you know, who I am and what kind of leader I am and what kind of um, business 
owner and business creator I am was dependent upon how my leaders show up and how my leaders act. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I felt like a failure because of how my leaders were performing or not performing. So let's, let's go to this belief first before we go any further. I think, you know, when we get stuck at a rank or feel stuck period, um, oftentimes it's because of this judgment. So I want you to like drop down into your heart. If you need to close your eyes to drop down into your heart, you can do that. But I want you to take just a minute and drop down into your heart and say, what kind of judgments have I placed on myself because of the way my builders are showing up? And just kind of do a little quick scan. Write, write down anything that comes to your mind um, so you can kind of see the, the words that might be going on in your head because of the way they're showing up. And just uncover that for a minute. Okay, so now that you know a little bit of what you're, you're taking on because of the way they're showing up, let's just get clear about which part is yours and which part is theirs. Okay, so there are things that we can do. There are things that Deanna and I, you know, like, hey, what can you do to support these people, right? We explored that. We went there. We found that. But what... What's the part that you already need to drop from the get-go? Are you taking too much responsibility for the way they show up? Do you need to give them? So many times um, I was so attached to my leader's results that I basically was like, they're going to succeed no matter what. Like, this is the deal. I am coming in and I'm going to have, I'm going to go presidential and all of my main leaders are going pres. And when that didn't happen, just like that, I started making judgments about my worth because of it, right? Um, so what are the, some of the things that came up for you as you scanned this? What stuff that you're thinking or it's going on in your head because of how they're showing up? Do you want us to talk, Natalie? Yep. <laughs> okay, this is Wendy because this is something that I – have struggled with a lot and for me it just comes back to that I'm not a good leader because like what Deanna was saying it's you know we're a reflection so what I keep it's just I'm not a good leader like obviously I haven't figured it out yet I, I I'm not doing the right things or they would be more successful awesome. awesome okay so now Wendy I want you to take that and as you felt into that mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you is it true well, I mean, <laughs> can you absolutely be sure that you're not a good leader and that you're not showing up enough? No, 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 that's not, I can't absolutely be sure of that, no. Yeah. So let's just say that that's not true, right? Right. Cause, but does it feel like there's a little bit of truth in there so that that seed kind of gets planted in our heads and then it, we give it some space or some energy to grow, yeah. right? Totally. So um, let's hear some more. What other thoughts go on? That's definitely one of the biggies right there. I mean, it's hard because, you know, you, you hear what Wendy said and you go, yeah, well, that's what I was saying to myself, right? Um, or, you know, for me, I, there might be this, this thought of like, oh man, you know, this leader is still having lots of, um, relationship struggles and, and, you know, not being able to work with their leaders. And so, you know, how, I mean, I'm loving on them and, and I'm not, you know, obviously I'm not giving them what they need to make, make that change. Right. Cause it just seems to continue. Right. Um, I like that rocks. Like, obviously I'm not giving them enough or they would be in a different place. Right. 
for me, what's come up is like that I have bad judgment and that I should never should have um, sunk my time, energy and resources into this certain person or people. Um, and I shouldn't, and I should have seen the signs early on, you know, that this was like a dead end um, because of the dynamics and everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how does that feel when you think that thought? It feels really discouraging. Like I don't even want to, like I, it, it bleeds over into my excitement about bringing on new people because I feel like, um, you know, what if this happens again? It's like, I just wasted a whole year of my life <laughs> and, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars trying to get this team up and running. And, um, you know, what if that happens again? So it creates a lot of fear for me. Mm-hmm. and disappointment which is not a great vibration to be in <laughs> so then that fear, we can kind of see the spiral right yeah. and we know which direction it goes that fear and disappointment then what do you start acting do you start moving or no in action you're in paralyzed action. right you're yeah. paralyzed by the fear yeah so um what's What's really beautiful about just recognizing this is seeing the truth of what's going on and letting go of the lies because those lies will literally hold you captive. They will paralyze you so that you don't move forward and reach the rest of what you were meant to do. So let me just propose one question. If these leaders, whoever they are, whatever they are, maybe it's all of your <laughs> builders that you have everywhere. But most of the time, it's we have some more painful ones, right? Where we're getting some more intense lessons. And so what if that particular builder or builders, what if they are just a lesson for you? What if they aren't punishment because you had bad judgment or um, you didn't do enough, or you aren't enough, but what if they're really a lesson so that you can be prepared for the next builder? Right. Yeah, it's a much better way to look at it, isn't it? <laughs> so, Deanna, like, take us there. As we went there for you, what did you learn in that process, and what did you come to, come to feel? <clears throat> I realized that um, basically I was, number one, I'm not responsible for how my leaders decide to show up. I realized that. Um, So I was able to let go of the belief that that was somehow a reflection on me. But as far as the lesson, um, it's funny because I think I was trying to learn the lesson started coming at convention about, I was hearing when Immaculate was speaking about about loving her, the people that were like murdering her, all of her friends and family and loving them because, you know, she couldn't even pray our father because God's the father of all of us. And then I had the conversation with you and I was just completely undone by a statement that I know you've made a a million times and it never meant anything like it did that day. It just hit me. And I was up all Mm -hmm. night just saying it over and over in my head. And it was um, that everything is either an act of love or a cry for more. And if that's true, that changes everything. Because I have not seen modeled in my life relationships where things were, where love was not conditional. Like it was always conditional on your performance. And so I love other people that way. I love people based on their performance, not necessarily like their performance in doTERRA, but just um, their performance in life, like how they treat me, um, how they respond to me, if they're loyal or not, um, because that's what I've seen that love is. But I can't love my team unconditionally until I receive the idea that God loves me unconditionally. And that's really at the root of my whole of the whole thing. That was the lesson. And I realized like, um, I could choose, it doesn't matter what leaders I choose (laughs) because, um, I have to learn that lesson so that I can love them. If, because if that statement is true, then everything is about love. And until I know how to accept unconditional love 
I can't give it to other people. So the thing that you said, Natalie, that I'm sorry, I'm trying not to cry because this is just so, it was such an intense day. Um, you said my son who I waited for 15 years for, I mean, I, there's no way for me to describe my love for him. Right. But what you said was God loves Xavier so much that he wants you to be, to understand unconditional love so that he can grow up having unconditional love. And as someone who grew up being horribly abused from before I could even walk and just my whole life thinking that um, the world wasn't a safe place and that you had to act a certain way to be safe and to be loved and to not stand out in the wrong ways. Um, I want my son to have a different experience. And I realized like, I can't give that to him until I receive that from God. And that is the lesson that God keeps bringing to me, not because he doesn't value me or because I haven't done enough and so he's punishing me, but because he loves me so much that he wants me to feel his love for me. And um, I literally, like, I the whole night I just kept hearing that same phrase that I just, that you said to me about, everything's a cry is an act of love or a cry for more. And I just, it's like, God just kept saying it to me over and over and over. And now it's like everything that happens, I hear this person just needs love and it changes how you behave towards yourself. And it changes how you behave to everyone. If that, you know, if, if all these songs and trite phrases we've heard that love is the answer and love is all you need, all you need is love. If all that stuff is really true, it, it radically changes everything and all of these business trainings and um, things that we've learned, it just kind of really all falls away and boils down to that one thing. Wow. Amen. <laughs> now, like, if all the business training that we've ever done falls away, that one thing is the key to um, influence, success, joy, whatever it is, right? If you think about the belief levels and where we're going, right? Influence is the top. Influence is with presidential. And what Deanna just learned is the key to influence is bottom line love. Nothing, nothing else. And um, reframing everything that you did um, and you experienced to love, right? Instead of feeling that judgment or punishment, right? like these builders were a punishment for you, seeing it out of love uh, changed, changed everything, huh, Deanna? Yeah. I mean, I don't even feel like I can be the same person with this information. How does that feel? How does that feel different than before? Honestly, this may sound strange, but it feels like I'm operating in a different realm now. Like, you know, I know that there's spiritual forces at work all around us and I've believed in that and I've lived by that my whole life, but I, it's like, I can see it. So I'm looking at a person, they're standing in front of me. We had an aroma touch training at our house and we, um, we moved in like five seconds before we left for convention. And then five seconds after we got home, we had an aroma touch training at our house and everything wasn't perfect at our house, which is real hard, really hard for me. But we did, you know, we did the best we could. And then I got this really seething letter from somebody that came that complained about just everything, everything we did at the Aroma Touch training. And my, my normal response in that situation would be to just make them feel bad for how, you know, like, you're welcome for us buying you lunch, you know, kind of, that's how my, <laughs> my instinct is normally. And immediately I heard, this is a cry for love. I think we got it. And it's like I could see the spiritual forces at work instead of seeing the person in front of me as like this ugly person that was attacking me. 
I saw something totally different. And I'm just, it's like it opened up my eyes in a whole different level. So it just feels like I have more responsibility with this information, but at the same time, I feel like I can rest in knowing that I don't have to be something else. I can be exactly who I am and God loves me who I am. And if he loves me who I am, then he loves all these difficult people (laughs) for who they are too. And it just changes how I, it takes a huge weight off my shoulders. I mean, I feel so much lighter in my heart and in my spirit. I just feel free with this knowledge. That, that is awesome. Like, I'm so happy for you, Deanna, because you have unlocked the door. You've found the key. And <clears throat> I, want, I want all of you to know that the key that Deanna is talking about of literally accepting that love so that you can pass it on no matter what the situation is, like, I wish I could tell you it was some complicated, you know, million step process that would get you really engaged in your head, but that's all it is. So you want to unlock the door to freedom? That's it. That's it. Bottom line, nothing more. You choose that. And I, I, you know, like, let's just outline this process that she went through. First of all, it was non-attachment. Like, I'm not attached to the way they show up. My worth isn't determined on it. Their worth isn't determined on it. And to get to that place, you know, she could talk about, I want to get to that place. But really, the thing that helped you go there, right, Deanna, seems like it was actually feeling God's love for you. Like, understanding that, um, that he was giving you this most incredible of all lessons because he loved you so much that he wouldn't let you go through life any other way than knowing that, you know? Um, so once you accepted the love, then you could go to non-attachment, right? Which is key. And then accepting responsibility for what you can change. And then with those pieces in place, then, then you're at freedom. So those three steps take you to freedom. Um, and that quote, everything is either an act of love or a cry for more. That, Brian Huddleston told me that the very first time. Um, and it has just stuck with me. And with that perspective, everything is easy. <clears throat> because I don't fight back for the, th- the things that are coming my way. I just see them for what they truly are, right? What's, what's insanity? Do you remember the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Right. right. <laughs> so with these builders, how often are we still playing in insanity? You know? We're doing the same thing, trying to show up a little bit more, hoping that something will change. And I'm here to say, okay, what Deanna just shared, we got to shift. We got to shift to that level if you want to unlock. Um, if you want to know how to unlock the keys to a relationship business, it's learning how to love you and love your builders love the people around you, love the people that you're working with. And when you do that, you'll unlock the door to presidential and beyond. Um, Deanna, um, how have your relationships been since this time? Like, what do you feel like your builders, like, did they just shift overnight and now they're like they're ready to go uh, this month. no not at all in fact um there's been more tests that have come up now and i did something i don't know if it was a good idea or a bad idea but um what i did was i sent a message a private message to each of my main builders on my team 
And I said, I have two questions for you. Can you name a time for me when I showed you unconditional love, like a specific instance when you felt that for me? And the second question is, tell me three ways that I can express love to you personally. And I was so excited. I'm like, okay, good. I'm going to get this information. And then I can, because I honestly, I'll be honest with you. This is kind of embarrassing and humbling to say, I don't know how to show people love unconditionally. I mean, I, I haven't seen very many um, examples of it in my life. And so um, I, I, I'm working on that. And I needed, I wanted to gather this information. And out of all the people I sent this to, I had two responses. And so I was just like, oh, so I know that I need to show you this love and I know that I need to find ways because you told me that you're like, you need to find ways to show up in ways that they feel love, not how, you know, maybe I think I'm doing all this stuff for you for your business and you should love me for that. <laughs> you should appreciate that. But they might need something different. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'll just ask them what they need and they'll tell me. But I, that just showed me like, there's so much more work I have to do to uncover this information. I have to build trust with them. and they're probably thinking like, what in the world is she up to now? You know, like, why is she even asking this? And so it was humbling. And I had to realize like, this really is going to be a process. Um, but it's okay. Cause it's like, I feel hope. I see that I, I know where I need to go. Um, and God has shown me the message. And I, I know that that doesn't mean that I'm this expert at it and that I've got it all down pat. And I'm probably gonna have to be reminded of it on a regular basis. Um, but now, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely not like I turned a light switch on and now we're all hugging it out. You know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a while. I just want to have this, like, you know, it's so easy to think that it's going to be like that, right? Because it feels so magical. You just unlocked this power. <laughs> but the truth is when you unlock that, you're going to get some opposition to that. And so you being able to you know, take those phrases in your mind that really stood out and hold them and keep them close. Like I, I really, you know, when I come up with something that, okay, I felt this, I need to shift to this. I know I have to write it down because next thing that's coming is this wave of, okay, you're being tested in this, right? Are you really learning this? Because there's this gift of like, I'm going to get the lesson and here comes the lesson and I want to get it deeper and deeper. So it's just a part of me, right? So it never goes away so that it's there no matter what um, situation is coming. And I love how you're paying the price. These are practical things, right? To go to them and you can ask questions like, how can I best support you? Right? If they're, if like using the word love might like throw them off altogether, you can just say, how can I best support you? And then the other thing is just that, like Deanna was saying, just understanding which love languages you can work with them. Um, so, you know, oftentimes with my builders, I was thinking, you know, I'll just use one example. Um, Mark and Jen Garrett. You know, so many times, you know, we started out as best friends in the business and, you know, it's been eight, eight years and you go through different seasons together, right? And so when I'm thinking I've shown all of this love and how could they not be feeling love? They're like, oh, I haven't received what you've done because that doesn't really matter in my eyes, right? But as I understand what really makes a difference for them, you know, what makes you feel most loved, whatever questions, even, you know, if you need to get Gary Chapman's book of the five love languages, get it. If you need to do a little online quiz about that with your builders, get it. And, um, and so that's what, um, I did. It was not that long ago that, um, I just felt like it was a Sunday afternoon. Jen Garrett was how many days overdue, you know, and I just needed to go to her house and love on her, you know, take some oils and minister to her and take care of her. And so I did, and I just brought her water and it wasn't anything super amazing, but I was there for her as a friend, you know, and I didn't feel like it was that big of a sacrifice or that big of a deal. Right. But Mark Garrett took a picture of my shoes while I was there at their house. And then he posted them on Facebook and he said, 
sometime angels come wearing platforms, shoes or something crazy like that. And I thought, oh my gosh, I found it. Like showing them acts of service, showing up at those important times, like that is how they need to be loved and feel loved no matter what. And the powerful thing is, is in all of the research and in my experience, once people know that they are loved unconditionally, then they can change. So this is just marriage research from the top marriage researcher in the world, John Gottman. And he basically said, um, once they know they're loved unconditionally, then there's about 20% of them that can change. And, and until they feel that unconditional love, that will not, there will be no change because they're just testing to see if, if they really are loved, right? But once they know that, then they can choose to change this 20% of them. And in most of our builders, that's all it would take to make a huge difference, right? It's just that much of a shift for them to unlock their own brilliance and be able to achieve what we've all seen that they could achieve or we know that is within them, right? So because this is a relationship business, I find that all of that marriage research and those kind of things are really relevant, right? Um, remember your five to one. Um, any lasting relationships need five positives for every one negative. That's another thing that Deanna and I talked about is like, How's your relationship overall with these builders? Like if your relationship isn't, isn't at this ratio of five positives to one negative, it's going to be really hard for you to make any headway, grounds, anywhere, right? Because you don't have this love to build on and this positivity. You know what happens with a teenager once, you know, they've got, a lot of negative and just a little bit of positive, right? What happens? They rebel, they move out of the house, you know? Like, how many of your builders are teenagers in doTERRA? And you're expecting them to be like, all grown up, right? Deanna, as we scan your team for that or your builders, what did, I mean, they were all like young adult teenager, correct? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, with the exception of one of my leaders. Yeah, that's definitely true. And that makes perfect sense. I've heard, it's funny, like I've heard you use that analogy before, but it just, it made a lot, I think it made a lot more sense to um, seeing it from my perspective as a parent now. Mm. I mean, there's a lesson there too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. The same truths are, are true in all realms of yeah. life. So yeah. we figure out how to apply it to this realm and voila, right? Well, and as far as the acting out thing, I mean, that's what Andy said to me. He said, have you ever been in a relationship where the love was conditional? And I mean, of course I have. That's been the majority of my relationships in, in my life. And he said, well, have you ever tested the boundaries? Have you ever acted out in a way just to see like, do they really love me? Let me, let me try and push the limits here. And I mean, that was so clear. That was so clear. And then you said, well, does your two-year-old ever do that? Well, yeah, of course he does. He does stuff just to see what I'll do. And I mean, that changes the way I parent with this knowledge now too, that that's what he's really doing is testing my love. Does he do, does mom really love me when I purposely take her laptop and chuck it on the floor? You know, and when I saw that, I saw so clearly why people are, are choosing the behaviors they're choosing. And it's like, all of a sudden, it's like not about me anymore and like what I did wrong. And I don't have to defend myself and I don't have to um, take responsibility for their actions anymore. I can just say, gosh, I really must not be making it clear to them that they're loved unconditionally. And how do I do that now? Um, how freeing is that when it's, all about them and your focus on them like yeah not due to your energy well i mean my stomach ache that i had been i had probably had a stomach ache for two weeks over this issue <laughs> and it was like it instantly like this knot in my stomach 
which, you know, right in the solar plexus area, which is where, you know, my belief about myself, it just like melted. And so I knew that was the answer is that I had been holding on to all of this condemnation of myself. And then of course I'm condemning them too, because we give out of what we believe about ourselves. And so, I mean, really when they say you have to work on yourself, it's, that's, <laughs> that's so true. And it just means something different to me now. I mean, really how I need to work on myself is again, it's just love. It comes down to love. And you say that all the time. Every time I ask you a question, you're always like, it's just love. It's just love. And I'm like, what does she mean? I didn't get, I just didn't get it. She's copping out. She's saying love every time. It's just because she doesn't know any better. Yeah. And I'm thinking in my head, like, I love them. I do love them. I love my leaders. I love them so much. And, Mm -hmm. but I didn't understand it because I hadn't received the message from God that I needed to hear. And I think that's why he kept bringing this to me. And, my leaders is because I needed to see it. And there's really nothing more I can say. It's just, it sounds so simple, but like for some reason it was like message received this time. Wow. So don't you think when we're ready to receive it, he brings the lesson, right? And he's going to keep giving that lesson. So if we want to unlock the, the possibility of moving on from these experiences. Like I remember I was telling Deanna this, just, Hey Deanna, you know, when, when Max got burned, you know, after just being in shock, the first thing my mortal mind went to was how in the heck can I get this lesson so I can get out of here? Cause I got to get out of here. This is painful. I'm done. Like, help me get the lesson so I can move on. So I, I know that's real. And that as soon as we get the lesson, we get to move on to different lessons, right? So if you're at a place where you're ready to move on from being pained by having builders that aren't showing up or in between, um, I think this is a great lesson to receive and you can decide how to receive it and how to change because of it. But as soon as you choose that, you can go to, you know, there's going to be the next lesson. It's not like you're going to move past it and then never have any other lessons. Like God loves you too much. The universe loves you too much to not give you those lessons, um, continually. But they're going to be different ones, right? Like, if you want to change to a different lesson, (laughs) get this one so you can move on. Um, I wanted to tell you about my experience with this and um, that this is one, you know, it it can go on in different, um, different ways. So... You know, we hit presidential quickly, comparatively, right? Then we took time out to make a system. Then I come back once I was like, okay, we can do this again. I want to bless more lives. I want my business to feel alive. I don't want it to feel like, hey, I'm talking about something that I did, you know, five years ago, and it's not living for me. I'm not living it now. And so I, I came back to it and started putting the same energy that I put into it before and the same focus, like, okay, this is going to be my next drink. This is what we're doing to create it. Um, I'm going to do it with love and power and grace. And here we go. And it didn't come. Like, it wasn't coming. It was hard. It felt like efforting you know it wasn't flow like I had experienced um in the beginning and I started wondering hey you know maybe I don't really have this maybe I don't really know how to do this maybe this has changed so much that I'm just like an old fogey and I don't know how to do it in this new world 
um, I wondered if I could even, you know, go forward or hold anything. And um, it was really hard for me because I thought, wait, this is who I am. And I had determined so much of who I was and my own worth on what I had created in doTERRA. Um, and so I, I stepped back for a little bit and thought, you know what? I can listen to fear, doubt, and worry. And I can give place for that in my mind and in my creation. Or I can choose love. And I can focus in on that. So what I started to do was just focus in on the people that were still waiting for me. And um, I did that by vision boarding some of those people and visualizing this new growth. And then also I would pray for it too. I just say like, whoever is still waiting for me, whoever I am the leader for, you know, send me to those people and bring them into my world. And I want to be alive. I want to be, um, I want to be living all out. So as I did this, um, it took a little bit of time. I feel like to that, for that energy to catch up, but, um, just in the last, last two months, I would say we have, um, enrolled, um, the biggest builder we've ever enrolled before. And we've also, you know, we enrolled the Harwards that their son went diamond in eight days. Like it's been the most, um, the most flow and the most simple that it ever has been. And I think, I believe that that is out there for you. And it's definitely a process to get there, but by just choosing the simple things that we've talked about today, you can start uncovering that. And I want to just be a voice for the, you know, after it wasn't coming for a while, I just thought, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is not coming. This is taking too long. I must not have it, you know, and that doubt and fear just surfaced again. And I just want to encourage you to hold on to the belief. Stick with the love, hold on to the belief, and go a little bit further because it's right there. It's right there. You wouldn't be getting the opposition if it wasn't right there, right? As we were talking, Deanna, you remember, you know, it was like, oh my gosh, you're on the verge of massive breakthrough. And that's why all of this crap is coming up in your business. And just realizing that and seeing it for what it truly is, right? Instead of just crap, see through the crap to the breakthrough. And I'm so proud of Deanna for doing that. And I want to just open up this conversation to all of you. Um, and if there is a specific situation that you're like, well, Deanna had challenges, but she didn't have this builder. Let's go there. Let's hear about it, you know? Um, and take it to the next level. So, anything you think that <laughs> that you want to explore here? Someone that you're like, I just don't know how to navigate this. Of course, the answer is love, but maybe there's some structure around that that we can explore together. This is the time where you talk. Okay, Natalie, this is Mandy Summers. How are you? Way to claim it. Great. What was that? Sorry. Way to claim it. <laughs> Great. Okay, so um, this is like exactly what I needed to hear today because I have been, I feel like I've been living Deanna's life for the last couple weeks and, um, and it's just been really disheartening. So thank you for offering this. Thank you for sharing. Um, I guess what I, kind of what I'm hoping, I, I feel like I've been getting the same message as well. I just need to love. I need to love unconditionally. I need to accept people where they are and um, help them to, see, to feel love in their life because 
maybe that's why they're having these hangups. Um, I have a particular situation where I have a builder who um, from day one told us she didn't want to build and I, but she did want to host a class. I went and did a class for her and never would accept any of our mentoring or calls or anything that we offer training. She would never come to them. She, she was always just like, I'm too busy for you. Like I've got this. I don't, you know, once she even accepted that she was a builder, she was like, I don't need you. So I, we show up to convention and over the summer, um, down here in Southern California, there was, uh, this awesome new training that was developed in her area where diamonds came together and began to present for four hours at a time um, on the business opportunity. And it's about an hour and a half away from me, so I never was able to make it up for the first couple months. I finally did. And basically, this girl, once I got to convention, sat me down and literally ripped my head off <laughs> for not offering her what she needs. And she has loved this group and they have been amazing. I mean, what they put on is phenomenal, but she's mad at me for not doing that. And, um, and, and then, but then at the same time has told me, don't talk to any of her people. You're the worst diamond leader in doTERRA. Um, you have no right to even associate with the people in, in my downline, even though I helped her enroll a lot of them. And I recognize she has a very, she had a very hard childhood with a lot of abuse. And, um, so I've just kind of been taking it. Like, I just feel like she's needed somebody to dump on. And, um, if I cry, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I've been crying over this for like two weeks. Um, but it was, it's just like overwhelming because it's spreading. She um, is spreading it to everybody on her team that will listen to her. And I'm not coming back at her because I don't want to engage in it. I had a stroke four years ago and part of that had to do with stress. And I don't want to engage in a negative energy on her team. I don't want it to spread to my other portions of my team, but I'm not sure how to stop the bleeding. Like, um, I'm not sure how to connect with her. And so, and I'm still just like, you're awesome trying to send her these things, but I'm getting bits and pieces from people, you know, coming at me. Mm -hmm. Um, and even with those people, I'm trying to like stay out of it. So what would your, what do you advise in this situation when I am trying to love and I keep feeling like, is there something else that I like, am I not loving enough? Am I, am I, am I not giving enough? Like, how do I? How do I live up to this when she wouldn't accept what I was giving and and now she's got this different mindset of what I need to be? I don't know if I'm making any sense. I'm sorry. Totally making sense. And I think all of us could say, how many of you have heard some of the things that Mandy just said? Like, I know, <laughs> like, Mandy, you are in the fire, girl. That means you're showing up big and you're playing big. And so anytime you get this stuff, remember that playing big looks like this. <laughs> it, it has tons of joy and it can have deeper dives. And so expecting it not to is crazy, right? Insanity. <laughs> um, but here's, I love what you were saying. How do I stop the bleeding? So let's think about bleeding for a minute. Um, when there is an open gash, a huge wound, right? And it's just pumping blood out. Um, we get to address that initially. And it's not just with, I hope you get better, right? So we got to do something first of all to, um, you know, kind of wrap that up and secure it. So um, the first thing, I would do is it's great to show love to them. And I think you're, you know, you're saying I'm trying to show love to be my, by not engaging in it, but I'm going to also say, you know, let's show some love to you by not, not taking all of it either. 
by owning what you need to own and letting her own what she gets to own. Okay, so some of the phrases that could be a part of that conversation are, um, let's say her name is Judy, right? Like, hey, Judy, I, I hear you, boy. And I can see how, you know, with being a part of that awesome training that you could feel like, oh, you know, Mandy hasn't done anything for me. You know, where has she shown up for me? And I'm just I'm so grateful that you've received that. I'm so grateful that's been given to you. That's so perfect. And I'm going to invite you to see um, how, you know, I've been the perfect upline for you. I literally am the perfect upline for you. You came to me because I was the right one. The universe brought this together because I was the right one. So, Instead of looking at our relationship right now and saying, you know, why I am not enough, uh, why you are suffering, why you haven't received what you've needed, what if we just flip that right now and go to this place of, hey, this is what is. What is, is Mandy Summers is your direct upline. And God knew that that would be the best way. The universe knew that that would be the best way. And what can we do together to make this everything that it was meant to be? So giving her, letting her own her stuff, if she wants to stay in her groveling, that's totally fine. But you are going to give her the pieces of, you know what? I, I so enjoyed building with you out of the gates. We enrolled some amazing people that have served you long term. There's amazing builders and leaders on your team. And I so enjoyed running with you for that. And I want to know going forward, how can I best support you? You know, you're getting this support from those other diamonds in your area. Let's navigate that. Let's make use of this gift that that is and how can I best support you with my unique gifts and strengths? You know, Natalie Goddard, my upline, she had an upline that didn't show up for a long, long time. And it was the perfect place for her to grow because it helped her become all that she was meant to be. And she didn't rely on anybody else. She became a strong person through that process instead of leaning like she normally would. So, you know, why is this the perfect situation for you? I love that. Thank you. You've got a talent for words <laughs> that I wish I could take with me, but I you can I, listen to it like 15 times, right? Like, right. Um, it hasn't come for free. <laughs> that talent, <laughs> right? We develop these talents with all these experiences and you're developing your talents right now and you're going to be able to express it masterfully because you love her. You know, so use some of those pieces to, to stand your own and give that wrap to the situation. And um, then as other people come to you saying, hey, I heard you're the worst diamond in doTERRA, you can say, wow, I'm so sorry that that, you know, that that is getting passed along. I love you and I care about you. I want to know how best to support you. I'm sorry that Judy is feeling that way right now. I wish I could change how she's feeling. Awesome. I'm, I'm focusing on what I can do and where I can make a difference. I love it. It kind of relieves this weight of trying to be something I'm not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it helps you just bring your gifts and strengths to the table instead of needing to be in every, I don't know, Mary Poppins, right? Like right. who wants to be the Mary Poppins diamond in doTERRA? I don't like be yeah. you. And that's always enough. And comparing ourselves, right? How many times at convention did we hear comparison is the thief of joy? Right. Like mm -hmm. let's, let's eject it from our business. Awesome. Thank you so much. I love it. Great advice. Great insights. Great questions. Who else? Hey, Natalie, it's Alonzo Manning Dog from San Diego. Man, I love your quote, Alonzo. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I had a question for you. Um, when it comes to stepping into that presidential diamond leader, mm -hmm. right? And uh, a big part of it is a belief in your influence or owning that influence. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that journey like for you or any advice on how to really own that for yourself to kind of build that belief? Mm -hmm. I, that's a great question. And that um, belief in influence, I really think that what we talked about today is core to that, that it was lots of choices all along the way where I chose love. And you get to have options, right? You get to choose fear, doubt, or worry. Uh, you get to choose to believe that you're not enough, or you get to choose love. So lots of days, lots of moments of choosing love and standing in that, you know what? We're here to change the world and nothing small is going to get in the way of that. None of this little petty stuff like this isn't, I love, I love you and I love you enough to say, wow, I, I feel like this is off. Let's look deeper. Let's find more. How can I better serve you? Um, what is true about what you're saying? And I think the other thing that is coming to mind about that influence is being really clear about your mission and purpose. Um, so for me, I did some personal work on getting clear about my mission and purpose. And it was like detective work. Um, I went back to, you know, personal blessings that I had received in my life and I scanned them and I searched them and I made copies and highlighted, you know, Hey, these are my gifts. Uh, these are blessings that I'll receive if I do this, you know, right. and I started just kind of piecing together the parts of what I came here to do and what I was about so that I was clear on what I was about and where I wanted to influence and what I wanted to influence toward. And for me, a lot of that has been this um, concept of a healer in every home, right? Like that may sound trite to some people, but I'm telling you that is like at my core. I want to empower people so that they can recognize the voice within them that's gonna guide them to peace, empowerment, um, wholeness in their own life and with their family. And that is core and key to me. So, you know, I, I came up with my own mission statement and that um, my mission statement was literally um, something that I said in the morning. Some people will do the, oh man, who is that? Uh, Ann Webb, she does like where you put the mission statements to music or whatever. And I think anyone could do that. But to me, it was like taking that, um, taking that and bringing that together. So get your mission statement, put it, do make it in a voice memo um, so that you can listen to that over and over. And I started repeating that and saying it to myself every morning. And I really think that's what brought doTERRA into my world, the way, it, um, the way it came and the way that it's opened up, you know, a path to move forward. So that's the other thing I would add is know, know your specific gifts and mission um, or the cause that you want to influence towards, whether, you know, whatever that looks like. That's, that's awesome. I, I, I love that comment because uh, that's something that I've been kind of uh, like searching in that respect. And the, the amazing thing that I see with you is how that's in line with like doTERRA's overall mission. And even like as a, as a whole world, like even uh, the, the plan that God has for his people is to uh, produce that, that empowerment and to produce that wholeness and healing and how you just fall in line with that same mission. And that's amazing to, 
to really outline, not necessarily being like a, a, a leader, but more of like how to follow in a, in a bigger like uh, concept when it comes to that. So awesome. Thank you for that. Awesome. Great question. Thank you. Any last insights, questions as we close? see um i want to deanna i want to hear from you just one last time of what you are creating going forward um i almost did i almost did a call for my team um where i titled it why i'm no longer building an essential oil business because <laughs> I feel like I want to make it more clear that that is not what we're doing here. Wow. We're not sure that's important to help people with essential oil. They've absolutely changed my life. But really what changed my life, it, guess what it was? It was love. It was somebody loving me enough to share that with me when I was so desperate. And I, I really, what I needed to know at that time was that somebody loved me. I was so alone. I had tried to take my own life. I just saw no hope and they brought me love. And that is why I accepted the invitation to try the oils. And so if we remember that we're not here to build doTERRA, and that is kind of like how moving forward, I want to, I want to make it clear and I, I've started saying it to people. Every time I do a mentor call, I'm like, I want you to know that if for some reason you never do another thing in doTERRA, I'm in your life and you're in my life for a reason. I love you. Mm -hmm. I want to help you shine your light in this world. That is why I'm here. And so I think I love what kind of what you just ended with is um, finding out what your mission is because sometimes we get confused and we get so caught up in changing ranks or um, being respected by our doTERRA peers for our accomplishments um, or even being admired by our team for what we've done or admired by doTERRA or asked to speak or put in a magazine or any of those things and we forget what our true purpose and mission is and so moving forward my mission is to let people my mission is to give from the fountain of unconditional love that God has given to me that fountain, I want, to, I want to give from that fountain to people and give them hope and give them the courage and inspiration to shine their light in the world in whatever way God has called them to do. That is what I want to do moving forward. And that really changes everything because it encompasses all I am and all I do, not just my essential oil business. That's such a small part of, of what I'm here to do. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Deanna Nichols, thank you for being connected to that and being that fountain. Um, I know that's going to change your life forever, and I know it's going to change everyone that comes in contact with you. Um, as, as, I, as I look at what we're doing here, you know, you know how often they say, I'm not, I'm not growing a farm. I'm not growing cattle. I'm growing boys. Like that's what we're about in this business. This is not about um, speaking or getting to the next rank. Really, this is about changing lives and you learn how to change lives and your life will be changed and full and complete forever. And so many lives will be blessed in the process. And that's not just feel good talk. That's the reality. Um, so uncover that. You've got it all within your reach. You know the answers for your specific builders and leaders. They were given to you for a reason and you know how to guide them. Drop into your heart 
follow your instincts, you're the perfect leader for them. You're the perfect leader for them. You are in the perfect place in your business. I like what our Aussie leaders, uh, Vanessa and Paul, call it one big tree. That your, your tree of love that you create here in doTERRA is just perfect. And so I invite you to see it that way and keep asking that, right? You're asking that question keeps your subconscious mind just going, looking for the answer of why is this the perfect situation for you to learn? What lessons are you learning right now? Um, what's, why are you perfectly supported? Why are you the perfect leader for them? Why are you the perfect leader to keep um, advancing and progressing in doTERRA? Why should you keep reaching out and keep making a difference and keep changing? So that's what we want to leave you with today. Love all of your guts so much, no matter what. Um, unconditionally, we love. So thank you so much. Um, excited for our next Press Club call. Um, these are all rock and calls. These are rock and calls and we have met as presidentials and we're excited to take up the heat and give you what you really need to advance and go to the next level. This is advancement. This is the, this is the good stuff. This is the real stuff. We love you. We'll see you here next week, 10 a.m. Different, different prez coming to you with an equally powerful message. Talk soon.